Hey, good morning, everyone. It's Tractor Man 44. Hey, you know what we're going to do today? We're going to see if we can get this old gal here fired up and get her in the shed so I can do some rework on it. I've had it for a number of years. It's set for um, seven or eight years after I brought it home. But at any rate, we're going to get this thing running, hopefully, and uh, get her in the shed and, and uh, go about the business of getting provisions to, to generate some electricity, be it an alternator or a generator, more than likely an alternator. Uh, do some wiring to it and all that kind of stuff, make sure it's charging. And of course, I've got a temporary gas tank I made out of a Freon tank. I'm going to have to use that for a while, uh, simply because i got to deal with the rust that's inside the tank. Like I said, this gal suffers from a number of issues. Uh, so if you want to hang around a little while, see what it's like to work on old stuff, you know, instead of all this fancy, shiny new stuff, you know. But let me tell you one little point. If you guys make temporary fuel tanks out of these Freon tanks, they're absolutely great because they're, they're pretty thick walled and everything. And it's very easy to weld you a pipe nipple right in there with a MIG welder. And you can put you a, any kind of a valve here to stop the flow. But one thing you have to remember is you have to keep a vent. So you have to leave your, your tank cap fairly loose or you run a screw in it and then back the screw out every time you start it. So it'll, it'll, uh, it won't draw a vacuum inside the tank with the, uh, with the fuel consumption of the tractor. If you pull a vacuum on a tank, it's going to run out of fuel. So that's a simple thing to do. You should never really get used to starting a tractor on the side. Uh, but, you know, I've been doing well, since I was a little guy. And there's, there's the routine that you have to go through to make sure. You know, like, you, you always got to do the handshake on the uh, shift lever, make sure it's in neutral. But uh, we're going to turn the gas on, give it a little choke. You know, I don't care what you say, it's hard to beat these little Continental engines. These guys are bulletproof, I mean, they're just smooth as silk. Now what we're going to do, I'm going to go to an alternator, a Delco, or a, or a Delco clone, or whatever you want to call it. This happens to be a Wilson. It's a 90-01-3125, 12 volt, 61 amp, 10 SI. 10 SI is actually the orientation of the mounts uh, and, and terminals. Uh, that's not the actual model number of the uh, the alternator, but this should be a true one wire alternator to facilitate wiring to make wiring very 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 easy. You don't have to mess with the diodes. You don't have to mess with uh, tickling terminal number one on the three wire. You know to make it start and all that stuff. So let's take a look. See what she got in here. Well, one of the tips that I've found, a true one wire will have a plug installed on terminal one and two. There's no access right there at all. You've got the, the simple one wire right here that does it all. Now, like I said, the 10SI has to do with the orientation of the mounting ears uh, as reference to the, the terminals. And this happens to be a 10SI, which is a very popular, popular mount. This is a true one wire, so this should be quick and simple. Well, it'll be simple to wire we got to figure out a mount for it. One thing I forgot to mention, this is a self-exciting. I said it's a, it's a true one wire. The true one wire is internally regulated as well as being self-excited. You don't have to worry about having a wire feed voltage whenever you turn the key on to terminal number one, like on the three wire, and then make sure that that, that voltage goes away by use of a diode or whatever uh, whenever, you, uh, whenever you get the engine up to run it. This being a self-excited self one will have a minimum RPM that's going to have to get to. So the drawback on these old tractors, which maximum RPM on some of these old tractors is only, well, this one here, I think, uh, I think uh, wide open throttle is 1,450 RPM. Uh, so what you have to do, if the, I think that the, the RPM that this will start begin the output is about 1,850 RPM. Could be wrong about that, but that's why you have to rev your engine up and you have to adjust the size of the pulley correspondingly to uh, to make sure that your engine rpm will spin this enough to give the out get the output and that's an easy test to perform you check your static static voltage to ground off of your battery terminal when you turn the key on and then as soon as you start it you should see that static voltage stay about the same and once you elevate the rpms at the point this becomes excited 
your output voltage on the battery terminal will go to 14.5 volts if you're getting output on your uh, on your alternator. But anyway, this is the bracket here that came off of the side of the block that holds this. So we're going to duplicate that, slightly change the dimensions because this alternator has to actually set farther forward in order to have the pulleys come in alignment with the belt. So I'm going to use this basic design right here so I get the five point mount and then adapt them to where it's going to extend farther forward to accept the alternator. So what I've done, I've taken a, a sheet of uh, 3 16 steel and I've got that shaped. I've got it drilled you know, for the mounting holes. Let's see if it fits. Looks like it's going to fit in there like it's supposed to. So here's the original generator bracket and then uh, this here's my slightly altered bracket to compensate for the different mounting requirements of this guy right here. My old buddy Dave at RCAF Polar Express and uh, Joe, Joe Lesage from, uh, from Steel to Wood, they're going to be totally impressed at lack of patina. So Dave and Joe, this painted up accessory is dedicated to you. There she goes right there. Take this, slide this guy right on there like that. Ooh, that's snug. That's the way I like it. What I'm going to do, I'm going to take this uh, bevel square. I'm going to set it to where it just clears the cooling fan on the alternator. Center line right on where the mounting bolt is right here. And I'm going to angle this right over at the mounting bolt off of the block. I'm making an alternator bracket for a uh, Massey Harris 1951-5051-52 Massey Harris Model 30. It has to have a slot in the new bracket for uh, belt adjustment. I'm using an old pausing, an old small pausing mill. Doesn't matter that it's old, doesn't matter that it's small, it does a good job. Well, what I'm doing instead of using a cutting head, I'm going to use a rosebud, which is a, a tip designed to, uh, to create a one heck of a lot of heat uh, in a very concentrated area. Whenever you bend this, the, it's going to stretch on one side and, and collapse on the other side. Uh, so you, you have to expect that it's going to, want to go, it's going to want to go crooked or it might even go wavy. That's really fairly close, and this is nominal. This does not have to be exact because we've got a lot of room to play with. That's almost what I've got measured. And if you see, I've got a little bit of a curl right there, a little bit of a buckle. I'm going to go get my, uh, my railroad iron. We now have the slot up here for a belt adjustment. If you look down inside, you can see a little easier how that bushing comes into play. Well, there you have it. Just one quick and simple way to mount an alternator, uh, convert one of these old tractors from a generator to an alternator. Now that we got the alternator mounted on there, next step is going to be putting a couple wires in place, you know. Then we're going to address this gas tank. I've looked down inside, it's definitely got a lot of rust in it. Well, now we're back to uh, completing the alternator and then the wiring and everything because the fuel tank in the last few days has been being uh, treated with electrolysis and then uh, super cleaned and coated with fuel tank sealant. And so that's an entirely separate video in and of itself. We'll be putting that fuel tank back on here in a little bit, you know. But uh, I was going to talk a second about ammeters. I'm going to eliminate the ammeter on this particular tractor here. I'm going to put a voltmeter on this one. A voltmeter, whenever you wire it to where when you turn your switch on, the voltage off the battery goes to the voltmeter. It'll tell you what your static voltage is. So you can take a look, see, depending on the resolution of the meter, and you can see uh, what your static voltage is of the battery. You know, 12 point whatever, you know. 
and as soon as your tractor starts up, of course you'll see the voltage drop whenever you uh, hit the starter button because you know it, it consumes electric and so the voltage is going to dip a little. But as soon as the alternator then begins producing the electricity, you'll see the voltage come on back up to beyond the static voltage and hopefully at the 14.7 or somewhere around there volts that your alternator should be putting out in order to properly change your battery. Now the self-exciting one wire style also has uh, internal regulation too to where you don't have to have external regulators or anything like that you know for for voltage control. I know I don't have to tell you all this the way an ammeter works it must be connected in series with with the load so you have two uh, two terminals right here the load actually goes through those two terminals and the, the reaction is a reading on the front of that scale. Now on this guy here on a voltmeter there's really nothing passes through it. It receives voltage and then goes to ground because it is a, a load in and of itself. It's just going to read what's going to be happening in the circuit. So I'm going to use those same existing wires that came off of the ammeter. The one that's going to power the voltmeter is going to be the one that gets hot when you turn the ignition switch to the on position. That's the one that will send power to my, D, uh, to my distributor. So it's going to be routed over to uh, the positive post on the voltmeter, and then the negative post on the voltmeter will go to a good ground. There will be no electricity flowing to the meter when the key is in the off position and the tractor is not running. The meter is going to register zero volts. As soon as you turn the key on, it's going to register. This one here is going to go to the positive side. This is going to go to the negative. I got to ground it. We'll be good to go. Now we got the wiring changes all made and everything, so now it's time to go back to making the, the alternator do its work. And what we have to do is we got to take the, the pulley off of the old 6 volt generator, transfer that pulley to the new 12 volt alternator. There we go. Nice clean up job on that, and it'll be good to go. It's exactly the same nut and everything. May have to do a little bit of adaption. Saw that off, we'll fire that down flush. I'm going to give it a go at that. Pretty much it right there. Uh, the only thing I'm concerned about is what the uh, excitation RPM is on this. Thing. So here she is. Got the alternator, alternator bracket, adjusting uh, adjustment. Got the gas tank completely clean from rust. I got it treated with a new uh, liner. Wiring is all complete for 12 volt. If you notice, I got a, a little bit more of a, a better mount for that temporary gas tank, that Freon tank. Uh, reason being, I've got to let that tank cure for 96 hours. Now, if it's going to work the way I described it to you, I turn the key on, we're going to get the dash light, and you're going to read static battery voltage. It's about 12.7 volts. I happen to have a digital voltmeter on it right now, double checking it. When I push the starter button, you'll see a momentary drop in voltage, but then as soon as I get the alternator to excite, you're going to see it go to 14.6 or thereabouts. That's providing it starts. Voltage drop. You saw it dip down about 10.2 volts, and it's already excited. We're running 14.6 14 point, 14 on the digital meter, and uh, above 14 on this. Above 14 on this voltmeter here. I think uh, we can consider that a success. All I've got left to do is wait for the gas tank to cure out, and then go ahead and start running on fuel inside the gas tank instead of my temporary Freon tank behind me. Other than that, I think I think everything is good to go. It's ready to put on a wood splitter, ready to uh, start dragging logs out of the woods. It's ready to do all, car all kinds of things around the place. At any rate, you know what? This is Man 44, and guess what? I think the next thing we're going to move in, kind of a toss-up between a John Deere 50 and an International H. I got two of those International H's. Time to get a little bit of attention to the better of the two. But I don't know. I ain't decided yet. Well, this is Man 44, and I am out of here.